Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. Now, I know this is going to look weird because I'm using a power supply stand to hold the graphics cards up, but they don't balance very well. The design of these XFX ones means they're great in your case, but they're not very good on a desk. So we're going to have to stand them up like this for the video. Now, I have a range of cards for us to have a look at today. I do have the MSRP version, which is very important, uh, and it comes in at £319. And the MSRP model that I've got is the XFX. I do have another XFX, though, which does make things even more interesting, and that is their OC model, and I have the white one. I love the fact that they always send me a white one because it does make uh, my life really easy because Technically, I personally would be looking for a white card because I normally end up doing a white build. Then I also have the uh, Sapphire Nitro Plus. Now, uh, it's not as crazy looking as the 9070 version, but it is still a Nitro Plus. You can definitely see the lineage, the heritage, but it doesn't come in at a huge price. This one is still 349 so we have one card at 319 and the other cards at 349. Now when we do look at these, obviously we have two overclock models and then we have the non-overclock model. So we're going to start with uh, the uh, boost speeds. Now one of the things I will say from the get-go is um, they all boosted really, really well and really strongly. Now, the Nitro, for example, is meant to boost to 3300 megahertz, and it will do in a game, but when we do our boosts, we pretty much kick the card's head in with OCCT, which gets them very hot, puts them under a lot of stress, which is why our boost clocks always look a little bit less than they would have been if we'd been using them in a game scenario. Um, but it's because we like to put them under an infinite amount of stress as much as we possibly can do, because that's technically our job. Um, so uh, this was just about 3,100 megahertz, which is still an incredible number. And you can see in the graphs that they all boosted very, very well. Now, weirdly, the, you do need to remember that there is a peak boost, which could be there for a second, maybe even less. And then there is an average boost clock across the 30 minute time that we would be testing for. And they all boosted incredibly well, especially the OEM one, which I wasn't particularly uh, prepared for. Now, next thing we do boost, then we want to start talking about um, clock, uh, sorry, temperatures. Now, with the XFXs, the non MSRP card only has two fans, but the fans are larger. The OC card has three fans, but the fans are smaller. Now, weirdly, no matter what I did for the um, uh, during testing, the non-OC card was significantly lower in the temperatures. Now, obviously, you could say that's because it's not boosting as much, it's not overclocked as much, but we've already seen with the boost speeds that there wasn't a great deal in it. And I actually do believe that the cooler on the non-OC one is the reason why. Um, and I think that the twin fan version is just that little bit more efficient um, and is basically just cooling that little bit better. Uh, so weirdly, the cheaper model is going to be the cooler one. And when we start talking about temperatures and stuff, genuinely, these cards in a system that is running with an AIO in the roof and an exhaust in the back, you're not going to hear them. Uh, if I was to do audio tests, I'd have to turn everything else off to be able to do it. And then if you turn all the other fans off, well, the fans are going to spin up a little bit more on the card because it's not being fed air from everywhere else. So there's no real accurate way that I can, at least in with the situation that I've got and with my office and everything, able to accurately test a card that would be this quiet anyway. It isn't going to be the loudest thing in your rig. Uh, people are then now going to say, well, Tom, what about um, uh, coil wine? Didn't hear anything with these. But I seem to notice a difference with coil wine with power supplies more than anything else. And I don't mean the power supply um, is where the wine comes from. I mean, the power supply 
causes the whine in the graphics card. Um, I just use an AX 1500i now and I don't get any problems and I very, very rarely get any coil whine unless you're in a menu somewhere that is doing 800 FPS and it's just the poor card screaming its um, nadges off because it is doing such a high frame rate. Now the other thing to pick between the cards, obviously the uh, Sapphire does look like a nitro. You still get the RGB flash down the side which is controllable. There is also a uh, ARGB header hidden away in the back but unlike the 9070 version which had a 12 VHPWR cable, this one to please many of you is just a normal 8-pin PCI Express connector and I'm sure as I said that will please everyone. Same connector for both of the other cards, just an 8-pin no lighting on the basic XFX. On the white one, there's no ARGB, but it does have a white lit up XFX logo at the end. It does, it's kind of sleek. Uh, it's kind of understated. Um, it's just a white logo at the end of the day. I personally really like it because like I said, it's understated, but a lot of me does wish it was ARGB. Uh, for no other reason than it's a white card, it'd be great if you could make it blue or red to match the rest of your system. But white's going to go with everything anyway. I don't think many of you are going to moan. Um, the design on this being uh, all satin on the front is really pretty. I love the fact it's understated. Uh, but when we actually boil down to the performance of the card, more often than not, the Sapphire comes out in front. I think there was one where COD, the XFX, was a couple of frames in front of the Sapphire, but more often than not, the Sapphire just edges it. And I do mean just edges it, but the thing to keep your eye on throughout all of this is how close the non-overclocked card is in all of the results. It is never ashamed. It is never kind of hidden there like the weaker brother at the back of the pack, it is putting up a valiant uh, performance in every single one of the games. There's only ever a few frames per second in it, and it doesn't matter what title that you're looking at. It doesn't matter whether it's uh, ray tracing, NVIDIA favored, whether it's uh, something that will favor AMD. This little card is never ashamed. Now, this is the reason for my angle with the video is well, how do you pick between them then? And it's kind of easy when you think about it. And that is, if you don't care what your card looks like and you just want it to work, then a non-MSRP card, specifically this F XFX, would be the way I would go. If you don't mind spending another £30 on a card for slightly better aesthetics, great cooling, uh, you know you're going to get good build quality, but a little bit of colour thrown in as well with the ARGB options, then the Sapphire Nitro Plus is the way to go. It looks like the more expensive one. Yes, it's going to be not exactly the same. It's not a carbon copy for cooler, but you can see where the, the design hues come from. I actually think then you go and grab yourself a Sapphire. The difficult one is the XFX. And I mean the XFX non-OC, because it is so close to the MSRP model. It's cooler. I actually prefer the aesthetics on the two fan model as well, which I wasn't prepared for. So in reality, the only reason why you go and buy this one is the fact it's white. So if you don't like the white, I would sack this off and go and buy this one anyway. I kind of hope that XFX do a white MSRP model because weirdly that would then be the, the hands down the one that I would go and get every single time. Um, so this card is kind of the, the difficult one in that you only buy it if you want a white one. But there's not a great deal between them. So it's not like any of them are ashamed or like I said, just uh, embarrassing themselves. Um, but overall, weirdly, I think if I was going to buy 
any of these for myself, I'd get the Nitro Plus, just because I am quite a fan of the Nitro Plus. I love the rugged styling on it. It performs well, boosts really well out the box, and is cool, calm, and collected. That's great. But if I was building a rig for a mate, and we we're on a budget, and they're not particularly picky, they just want um, a good value card and they just want to be able to turn it on and they just want to be able to get some decent frame rates and play games, I'd save the £30 and I'd probably spend it on a slightly bigger NVMe or a quieter uh, CPU cooler or something like that. But the MSRP model would probably be the way that I'd go in that scenario. So as always, my videos are just like mates chatting in a pub. I'm not here to sell you anything. I'm not here to, um, yeah, to sell you anything really, but I'm, we're just here for a good chinwag and to uh, debate possible options. Um, hopefully you'll understand my thought processes with these. I'd love to know if this is gonna be a card that you're gonna be investing in for yourself or maybe your children or your girlfriend because uh, for a cracking um, price card like this, I think these are a, a great option. A lot of you are gonna be screaming at the screen. I'm also gonna assume that a lot of you have already commented, where are the 50-60s in the graphs? Well, it's actually been kind of difficult to get a 50-60. A, I was at Computex and then people don't particularly want the bad news. So I've not been able to get one yet. So uh, what I'm going to say is if you're arguing where is the 50-60, I wouldn't bother. I'd just go and get one of these.